I'm seeing a lot of discussion whether AMD was being just as misleading as Nvidia regarding reviews of their eight gigabyte models for the 9060 XT in this case. Uh, again, Nvidia was not sending out review samples of eight gigabyte cards of either the 5060 Ti or the 5060. And with the 5060, things were even more unusual, which is sometimes cards just don't have a review program, which would be unusual for a 60 class card. Uh, but in this case, uh, even if reviewers were able to get a card from board partners uh, and other uh, channels, the uh, NVIDIA was withholding the driver to not allow testing, except it then became apparent that some outlets actually did get the driver ahead of time, but only if they would publish a very NVIDIA curated preview promotional material. Now, AMD has not quite gone to that level. But uh, in other words, now we're getting into me weighing in on the situation. So I've been seeing a lot of comments saying AMD is doing just as bad of a job here as Nvidia. And I think both absolutely do deserve some criticism and uh, are making misleading statements, uh, but it's not quite the same situation. So I'll talk about my experience and what seems to be going on with other review outlets as well. Uh, so today the 9060 XT has launched. There's both an eight gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte variant. Uh, just like with the kind of misleading naming scheme on the 5060 Ti, 16 gigabyte and eight gigabyte variant, they have the same name, uh, which means that if you're buying one in like a pre-built system, oftentimes they don't even publish, whether it's an eight gigabyte or 16 gigabyte card, that kind of thing. So it can be seen as an attempt to mislead consumers, sell them a worse product by having the name of a better product on the system, that kind of a thing. So they're definitely both doing that. Now, uh, now AMD did seem to actually send out review samples of the eight gigabyte, or at least they were available and the driver wasn't restricted uh, to some outlets. For example, Hardware Unboxed was today able to publish an eight gigabyte 9060 XT review. Uh, it says bad, watch before you buy. And so uh, I would recommend uh, take a look at this. Um, it does the similar kind of side-by-side -side comparison to what I do in a lot of my content on this, where you see the missing textures, you see the 1% lows. Um, so there's that. It's it's all the same issues that we would expect and we've seen with the eight gigabyte 5060 Ti and 16 gigabyte. But it looks like Hardware Unboxed were able to get a sample and test it in time for launch day. And that wasn't the case uh, with the RTX 5060, uh, either TI or non-TI 8 gigabyte cards. Uh, however, though, it doesn't seem like most media outlets were able to get the 8 gigabyte 9060 XT. For example, uh, Linus Tech Tips ha had their review titled, This Was Supposed to Be a Happy Day. Uh, and a lot of their criticism here is that, again, AMD went with this 8 gigabyte option, uh, which can be misleading, but also that they were not making it available for review. So even a reviewer as, <laughs> as big of a deal as Linus Tech Tips was unable to get an 8 gigabyte 9060 XT to include in their review. Now, the reason AMD gave for this is that it's based on regional market demand. In other words, what they're implying is that the reason they weren't seeding review samples to a lot of review outlets for the eight gigabyte model is that these cards weren't really planned on being sold or at least in any major quantity in those markets. And we're talking markets like the United States, for example. Now, LTT rightly criticizes this argument given the fact that their reach is global and they are, I think, the biggest channel reviewing graphics cards uh, <laughs> um, in the world. And I think even in other regions that aren't uh, you know, English speaking necessarily, probably still get a lot of views uh, in those regions. So that already kind of rings a bit hollow. I will also say that this is the same thing that I was told. I was told that this was just not, they, it's not that they're banning samples of the eight gigabyte cards, but they just weren't seeding them in my region. Now, again, implying that the sales of these cards aren't really targeted at my region. So let's get into that for a second, because I went ahead and checked at uh, Newegg, for example, which is selling in the United States, and are there any eight gigabyte models available? Uh, so let's search 9060 XT, let's sort it for eight gigabyte models. Uh, we could go ahead and sort prices low to high, and sure enough, there are tons of eight gigabyte models. 
Uh, we can also talk about, okay, was the MSRP uh, real or not? Well, there seems to be a bunch of different models available at the $300 MSRP. However, they definitely go above the $300 MSRP as well. Uh, a bunch of them available at 330, 340, 350, 370, uh, and even $380. Now, these went on sale several hours ago and I only see one model out of stock and it's one of the MSRP models. So it doesn't seem like demand for these is crazy high or it's that supply is widely available. But my point here is that if the argument was these aren't really being sold in my region, so it didn't make sense to sample them here, that certainly does not seem to actually be true. So there's, uh, there's that. Also, I did just go ahead and buy this $380 model. Now, why did I buy the most expensive and stupidly priced model? Well, that's because I uh, want to review the eight gigabyte model against the 16 gigabyte model. And the review sample I got for the 16 gigabyte model is the ASUS Prime version. So I did just go ahead and buy the matching eight gigabyte model, even though it's stupidly priced, so that when we get the side-by-side -side comparisons, we're eliminating as many variables as possible. It's the same cooler model with the VRAM being the only differentiating factor. So uh, thoughts on that. Again, it doesn't seem like that, that argument that this my region, the United States, isn't really being targeted with these cards. That just does not seem to be true. They seem to be widely available and many of them are available above the supposed MSRP of the 16 gigabyte model. Now, let's go ahead and check in on the 16 gigabyte model while we're at it um, and see, because uh, the other question mark is, was the MSRP real? Because when I did some review, uh, you know, the reviews published the day before launch date, yesterday as of the time of filming this, uh, so I was only able to speculate on the pricing of these cards. So let's look at what they're actually like today and then also think about what is it likely to be in the future beyond launch day? Because remember that AMD's last GPU launch, the 9070 and the 9070 XT, were available at MSRP at at least some retailers in at least some quantity on launch day, but have been basically impossible to find at the original MSRP ever since. And it became very clear that AMD had only enabled those MSRP sales on launch day as a special promotional price uh, made possible through rebates back to the retailer. And those were only available in limited quantities. So it, uh, we'll have to see whether that's happening here. And I do have some thoughts on that. I do think we have some evidence that that is the case. Anyway, so how are the 16 gigabyte models doing? First of all, again, if I sort by lowest price, uh, but it shows out of stock options after it shows in stock options, do note that out of stock options, many of these have sold out. So there were some $350 models available on launch day. Again, we'll have to see if those get restocked at that price. Uh, but those, uh, those models have sold out. And you'll see that most reviews, including my own, said that if you can actually get a 16 gigabyte model, at its MSRP, whether that's a launch day special or not, if you can get it at that price, it represents very good value uh, with at least what's available in the current market. Whether or not the generational uplift was mind blowing or not is another question. But the point is in the current market up against cards like the uh, 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte version, which costs more than $350, um, this 16 gigabyte option with a little less raw performance, a little less feature set, but VRAM making it an actual useful option in modern games um, uh, does, does make this, I, I think, worthwhile at that point. So there were a number of $350 options available, and they are all sold out at this point, at least at Newegg. Uh, then there were some slightly more expensive options, like $370. That looks like it's also sold out at this point. And then we have an Asus Tough Edition listed at $480. Now this one says out of stock. I'm not sure I ever saw it in stock though. So I'm hoping that this was just never listed at this price. If anybody was buying these at $480, I don't know. I guess you can do what you want with your money, but that is not a good value product, <laughs> okay? Now, the ones that are still available in stock are available at $390 and then $420. Now, this $390 price point is really interesting to me uh, because 
if uh, you look at the United States tariff situation, and I'm gonna be honest, I've been trying to figure out how tariffs affect graphics cards right now. And as far as I can tell, they are at least affected by the blanket like 10% tariff on just everything coming into the United States, as far as I can tell. I'm not an economic policy or taxation expert. Uh, and this all, all has all been kind of complicated. But the MSRP is supposed to be 350. If you do 350 uh, and increase it by 10%, you get 385. So that this is an interesting number. I'm curious if this is the number we're actually gonna be seeing. Uh, for the common available price on the lower end models uh, once the MSRP ones uh, are out of stock. And I'm curious if these actually get restocked at this higher price. Also, um, like some of these, it's a little hard to tell. Is there a difference between this MSRP option and this non-MSRP option? So we've got the Gigabyte Gaming Radeon RX 9060 XT, 16 gigabyte GDDR6, etc. Okay. It even says gaming OC model right here. And this is the $390 model. And then if I look at the $350 model, the only difference I guess is it doesn't say the gaming OC at the very end of that line. Kind of makes you wonder if this was the special launch day edition and this will be the actual product that's available past this point. And wonder if AMD had any kind of rebates going on there. Again, we'll have to monitor the situation as it unfolds. Uh, now, let's go ahead and check in on another thing that I found kind of interesting. So notice uh, that there was an Asus Prime model listed at $350. And this was the model I was given as a review sample. And it is apparently available at MSRP, although it has sold out at that price. But now I want to compare that to something pretty telling in, in my opinion. Notice what I just bought. I bought the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte Asus Prime model to try to get the matching cooler. And notice, I bought it at Newegg for $380, plus sh some shipping. <laughs> anyway, uh, with the rush shipping to try to get it as soon as possible for reviews, I ended up spending over $400 on this. I don't recommend you guys do that. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, this is $380 for the 8 gigabyte model for the Asus Prime. Interesting, because again, if we look at this, the Asus Prime 16 gigabyte model is listed at $350. So my speculation here is this feels like that this $350 16 gigabyte model for the Asus Prime must have some sort of special deal going on right now that's enabling this pricing if their eight gigabyte version is listed more expensive than their 16 gigabyte version with the same cooler model on it, right? That seems a little bit suspicious. <laughs> anyway, so I, I um, anticipate this $350 16 gigabyte model not being restocked at this price. I would be suspicious that it's gonna be restocked at a much higher price, but again, this is speculation. We'll have to follow the situation and monitor it accord accordingly. So let's try to wrap up a conclusion for this video. Uh, are the people saying that AMD handled this eight gigabyte stuff and their and their fake MSRPs um, uh, just as bad as Nvidia did? And I would say that it's not quite as bad, but it's still not great. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, like I said, the most misleading thing uh, seems to be this kind of statement, um, like, like LTT was highlighting and like I, I experienced myself, that the reason given for not sampling eight gigabyte models was that it's based on regional markets, um, implying that regions like mine, the United States, would not really be targeted with eight gigabyte models. And yet it is very, very clear that these eight gigabyte models are definitely being uh, made available and trying to be, be so sold in fairly high quantity and even at fairly high pricing in my region. Uh, we then, uh, again, now talking about the MSRP situation, um, uh, again, there are MSRP models available on day one, but the question mark is really, are those going to continue to be available in the future? And like I said, there's suspicious pricing of the 16 gigabyte versus eight gigabyte models uh, of the same card being priced either similar or different, um, indicating that perhaps there's some sort of day one promotion happening, enabling MSRP pricing that may not continue. So that's kind of the summary of that situation. 
Um, and then generally, uh, again, it does seem like there was at least some availability of launch reviews of the eight gigabyte model as opposed to none. And there was no um, uh, positive coverage requirement attached to getting the review driver if you did manage to source a card. So uh, it was not great. This was not handled well, um, but it doesn't seem to be quite as shady of a situation, but still is not getting a pass as far as being handled um, uh, with a great deal of honesty and uh, <laughs> integrity. <laughs> anyway, that's my weight on a weigh in on this whole situation. You can let me know what you guys think in the comment section or what pricing and availability looks like in your region, because the United States is one region, you might live in another. I hope all of you have an excellent day.